To say that uh, it was rough to
name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to St John's on this bright autumn morning. Looks like you've all navigated the change in the clocks and had that extra hour. And there was nobody waiting on the doorstep an hour early when we got here this morning, so hopefully that's worked out all right. But welcome to all gathered here. Welcome to those joining us remotely on this last Sunday after Trinity, which can be, as I'm going to say a little bit later, a bit of a multiple choice Sunday as to kind of what we celebrate on this day. But we give it all for Jesus, as our opening hymn said. So we turn to God as we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. So may the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. 
I'll collect our prayer for this week. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Do please be seated for our readings. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame those with child and those in labour, together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading is from Hebrews. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Do please be seated. As I mentioned at the start of our service today, offers us a bit of a multi-choice Sunday. We could be marking it as a dedication festival for the dedication of a church, and we celebrate this wonderful place of prayer and worship over a long, long time, many decades indeed, and the life that now this church holds in the people within it. It's the last Sunday after Trinity. The leaves are falling, everything's going gold and yellow, and it's coming up to that time, that season of remembering. Let me move closer to all saints, all souls, remembrance Sunday and those times in which we remember those who have gone before us. Or we could mark it as Bible Sunday. Hopefully, we'll be celebrating a bit of all of these, but I'm going to focus on Bible Sunday today, an opportunity to celebrate the place of the Bible in the life of the church, to think about its impact, its influence on our lives on our, our communities when we put the word into action. I wonder what place the Bible has for you. I love it and I get quite excited about the Bible because for me it has been life-changing. This faded copy of an authorised King James version of the Bible was given to me when I was in primary school I know that because it says in the front, Simon Archer, class eight. And that was at Newhall Junior School. And inside it's written to Simon, happy Easter from gran and granddad. My grandmother gave it to me for Easter and urged me to read it a chapter at a time. So I did my best. And of course, what do you do? You start at the start of the book and then work your way through to the end I soon ground to a halt. It was full of what I thought to be impenetrable language, loads of yees and these, thous and begats, and eventually, although I think I got to part way through Leviticus, I stopped. Why had she given this to me? Why she thought this was worth doing? I had no idea, I just couldn't fathom it. It felt like a dry, almost restrictive rule book to keep me in my place. Fast forward some years later into my mid-twenties, for reasons I won't go into now, but it involves a very heavy Saturday night when I was doing my degree. 
I'm lying there, semi-awake, on the sofa at home in my digs, watching a Sunday morning TV programme. I couldn't get up to change the channel. I just had to lie there and let this programme unfold on me. And it was about young people visiting the Teze community in France. So one young man who was interviewed said a really good way to begin exploring the Christian faith was to read Luke's Gospel, then the book of Acts, both written, we think, by the same person. So the story of Jesus and the beginning of the church. Why that struck me, I'm not entirely sure, but armed with my grandma's gift Bible and a modern language New Testament that I've been given at secondary school by the Gideons when they'd visited, um, I started reading the Gospels. And that's when it happened. There, in the Gospels, I encountered a Jesus I had never known. Not a rule-obsessed joy killer, as I'd thought, but a loving, liberating joy bringer. Not comfortable or safe by any means, but magnetic, alive. And I began to think this Jesus was really worth knowing. Maybe, maybe at a stretch, perhaps worth following. But as the journey evolved, my life was never the same. A bit like blind Bartimaeus in that gospel reading. In one particular sense, I began to see. I also discovered the Psalms. All human life seemed to be expressed there. Joys and pains, lament, celebration, testimonies to God's goodness, alongside honest wrestling with the struggles of suffering. It didn't sugarcoat any of these things. And times when God seems to be silent. Where are you, God? How long are you going to leave us in this situation? It was honest. It felt truthful. It felt heartfelt. And the more I read, the more I was drawn to know God's in Christ. So how do you read the Bible? Do you read the Bible? How do you come to it and read it yourself or read it with others or hear it being read? Conversations over the years with church folk and people unconnected with the church have often included a view that the idea of reading the Bible is really daunting or off-putting. What's the right way to read it? Well, some advice I found really, really helpful was given by one of my favourite writers on the Bible, Paula Gooder. And she suggested the key is to read the Bible well, rather than thinking there's a right way to do it. Read it well. Don't think there's just one right way to do it. And she offered five tips, all of which involve seeing the Bible as a friend, a friend to develop a relationship with, rather than a text to be scared off or daunted by. First point, it seems blindingly obvious, but read it sometimes. If you're making the Bible your friend, friendships grow by contact. Engage with the Bible. Be serious and chew the fat about life as you're reading it. As a start, read the bits you enjoy. Perhaps one of the Gospels. You can read Mark's Gospel in less than two hours at one sitting, if you so wish. And Luke and Acts are a lovely companionship to the start of the story of Jesus and the church. Read the bits you enjoy and that you want to read. Then find ways to dig just that little bit deeper, perhaps by following the lectionary, that list of daily readings that we use in the Church of England, or by using daily Bible reading notes. I know some people here do that and really value it. So read it. Secondly, you need to listen carefully to what your friend is saying and not interrupt them all the time. Stop and listen carefully to what the words are saying. You don't have to interpret them straight away. 
That's something to build on and build towards. Thinking about what the words mean can follow. Then thinking about how to apply them to our lives. Thirdly, be aware. Be aware of yourself and be aware of others. None of us, not one of us, reads in a vacuum. None of us read anything totally objectively. We bring our own personalities, our ideas, our biases to the act of reading. It helps to know that we do this, to be aware of who we are and what concerns us. And that will affect how we get on with the words that we read. I come to the Bible as a Christian, as a priest. I read it and study it because I believe in the God the scriptures reveal. And I want to learn more and grow in my faith. An academic or an atheist would approach a passage or book of the Bible in a very different way with their own particular objectives and understandings, even if they may not be aware of all of those. So be aware of yourself when you come to read. Fourthly, you are allowed to disagree with your friends. You will find bits of the Bible that you disagree with, which disturb you, which trouble you. This doesn't mean there's something wrong with you or with the Bible. It's an opportunity to grow. As you wrestle with it, think through it, ideally talk it through with other people, you learn more about God and about yourself. And finally, prepare to be transformed. Friendship begins to transform us. Be prepared for that. Think of a friend you admire, someone you really look up to and love you seek to be a little bit more like them, perhaps, or learn from them and how they live in how you live your own life. It's a bit like allowing the Bible to read us in a way. It helps to make us into the people we long to be and who God intends us and longs for us to be. Now, I found those tips. Read the Bible sometimes. Listen carefully to what your friend is saying. Be aware of what you and others bring to the text. You can disagree with a friend and prepare to be transformed. Those have been really helpful to me in navigating my study and engagement with the scriptures. And it's one of the core ways in which we listen to God. I am increasingly deeply convinced that we are called to be a listening church, listening to God, listening to one another, listening to our neighborhoods. Sometimes it's been called 360 degree listening. Listening well will grow us as disciples, will help build relationships with our neighbors and open the door to sharing our stories of faith. In the collect for today that will be on your blue sheets, notice that after declaring that God has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, the first thing we pray for is that God will help us to hear them. Long before the advent of printed books, the Christian community, like their Jewish forebears, will have heard the scriptures being read aloud, most likely from a scroll or from parchment when they gathered together in worship. They would have discussed what they had heard and be taught from them. They would, like in the collect, have taken the time to inwardly digest them so that God's word to them would sink deeply into their hearts and into their minds and shape their life and their mission together. So my invitation 
to you today is to think what place does the Bible have in your life? Do you make time alone or with others to give that time and attention to hear it, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest it? Because it will change your life and change it for the good. <coughs> Amen. So may I invite you to stand as you are able as we declare our faith together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with power. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Do please be seated for our prayers. To the words, hear us, would you respond? Hear us, good Lord. Hear us. Hear us, good Lord. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people, for our bishops, our senior clergy, for all who teach and guard the faith for those involved in mission and evangelism, for those who teach in our schools. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and bind us together in the bond of your love. Hear us, hear us, good Lord. Lord, we pray for the leaders of nations and for those in authority under them those led into war and conflicts and killing, those into distrust and intolerance of neighbours. Pray for all who lead in our politics, our economics and business and in the church. For all who lead, give them the gift of your wisdom and a right discernment in all things. Lord, bring your peace to Gaza and Israel, to Ukraine, to Yemen. Hear us, hear us, good Lord. 
We pray for this community in which we are placed, the communities from which we come and to which we shall return. For this town, for all who live, work and visit here. For all who seek the common good. Speak your word of peace in our midst and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Hear us. Hear us, good Lord. We pray for those who do not believe and for those of hesitant belief. Those who want to believe but don't quite know what to believe in or who to believe in. Open their ears to hear your voice and open their hearts to receive you, the very word of life and love. Hear us, hear us, good Lord. We pray for those bowed down with grief, fear or sickness. Praying especially today for Betty Bourne, Enid King, Sess Taylor, John and Christine, Claire, Andrew, Josie, Barry, Russell, Joy, Ian, for Father Philip, for Anthony Merrick, for Amy Wright, for Robert, Rachel, Cyril Burton, Ella May, Gary and Lucas. May Christ, your living word, bring them all comfort and healing. Hear us, hear us, good Lord. We give thanks for all who have died in the faith of Christ. And we rejoice with Julie Johnson, Anna Maria Pearson, Bobby Herdman, and at their years mind, David Brunning and Francis Acton. We rejoice with them and all your saints, trusting in the promise of your word fulfilled. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. So Lord of the church, hear our prayer. Make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us stand together as we're able, as we share the peace. Let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer one another a sign of God's peace.
pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. Lord Jesus, you nourish us at the table of your word and the table of your sacrament. As we feed on you the bread of life, may we daily grow into your likeness. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is your eternal and creative word, through whom all things came into being, the word made flesh who dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. He fulfilled the law and the prophets, dying for our sins and rising again in accordance with the scriptures. He stands among us in his risen power, opening to us his living word, making himself known in the breaking of the bread. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. you are holy indeed the source of all holiness grant that by the power of your holy spirit and according to your holy will these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup. So that we, 
in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Divine, St. Chad and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> So we pray for the coming of the kingdom in the prayer that Jesus taught us in whatever version or language is most appropriate for you. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be here.
And let us pray. God of all grace, your son, Jesus Christ, fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace. And in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Do please take your blue um, service sheets with you with information on there. Nothing greatly to add to what's on there. Um, the Archer Camping Trolley was pulled into good service this morning to wheel the new hymn books into church, and we will begin using those um, from next Sunday. Um, if people would like to support and buy a book, although you can't take it home, um, we're asking for a donation of around about £10 per book, which is less than the retail price for them. Um, and money checks thing can be given to me or I think to Stephen. Um, I, I missed that off. I think I was too desperate to get on holiday. I missed that off the instructions on the notice sheet um, before that. Um, but we'll hope to be well, we will begin using the, the new service hymn books next Sunday. So, our prayer of blessing the Lord be with you. Go now in peace, knowing that you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.